Welcome back to the Snowpoint cast. Uh, today we're going to be talking about a deck from 2010 called Jump Luff. Uh, Jump Luff is a really strong archetype. It won in the juniors division. Um, a girl named Yuka Furusawa uh, won with it. But yeah, let's get right into it. So starting off with four Hopip. Uh, Hopip's got 30 HP, a single retreat, resistance to psychic and a, or resistance to fighting rather, and a weakness to fire. Um, so 30 HP. That's actually kind of really low. It's um, kind of like really suspect if you start with it um like a lux ray can one shot you for a dce um so you can get donked that way a guard chomp also donks you for a dce um triple crobat drop if you're going uh first and your opponent's going second like there's just a lot of ways to kill a hop -ip. um and i guess you know that's the drawback because of the power of the deck but 30 hp is kind of meh um so it has an attack called bounce so 10 you can switch hop -ip with one of your bench pokemon so that's really nice being able to retreat to the bench is really cool um especially because you do play a spirit tomb so being able to switch into that spirit tomb to trainer lock early is really good um you play two skip loom uh, this is actually the incorrect skip loom that i have right here this is the one from uh, i think it's from heart gold soul silver or one of the heart gold soul silver sets um it's not the correct one um there's one that's better so there's one from secret wonders uh that is better but let's talk about this one for a second so they both got have 60 hp um they both have single energy attacks but the difference is uh the poke body on skip loom from secret wonders so um the poke body is called cotton balloon uh if skip loom has any grass energy attached to it any damage done to skip loom by attacks from your opponent's evolved pokemon is reduced by 20. um so right like why would you not want that poke body uh you have the same amount of hp and the attacks are slightly different like the one from the heart gold set uh does 20 flip a coin if uh heads you get you do 10 more which is meh um, i actually like u-turn even better so you turn for one grass 20 and then you switch it with one of your bench pokemon so again that's really nice for spear tomb i mean you don't want to have that attacker in the active if like if you have to attack with a skip loom or a hop it being able to just switch it to the bench is much better than uh leaving the active for sure so free retreat is also um nice on that guy having a free retreat cost they both have free retreat but um free retreat is definitely a cool part about skip loom uh, and then we're gonna get to jump luff so jump luff is the main attacker of the deck uh, it's got 90 hp free retreat as well resistance to fighting and a weakness to fire uh, so first attack is your main attack it's called mass attack you do uh 10 times the number of pokemon in play uh yours and your opponent so uh, mass attack's really interesting it, there's a lot of um pokemon attacks that have been like based on the pokemon in play um sometimes yours sometimes yours and your opponents uh there's an napoleon that got reprinted that is very similar um but the problem with these types of attacks in my opinion is you're kind of hoping for your opponent to misplay in some ways um mass attack like if your opponent drops four bench pokemon you're gonna be mass attacking for 110 for the, like until you start knocking out pokemon and the the deck plays so many damage modifiers that like four bench pokemon is a lot to be like over benching and if your opponent over benches that's great because you know you get to have that attack power but um i think the problem with this deck is like if you're playing against a solid opponent in the masters division they know that you attack based off the total bench so they're not going to just drop collector and drop down three pokemon like i feel like that was very common in the juniors division especially with roseanne's research and collector just being like staple cards and a Uxie being a really good card just like benching pokemon is a misplay against this deck in in some senses uh so you know uh, mass tech's still really good but i think the the flaw um inherently with that is you, you're kind of relying on your opponent um but yeah so it does 10 times the amount of pokemon on play and you play a bunch of damage modifiers as well so um you cap at 120 if your opponent is really dumb and benches a bunch of pokemon um but you also play like an extra belt and uh crobat so you can like damage modify that as well if they think they're safe you can uh Get a little extra damage in there so it's kind of an inter interesting attack for sure it's really good um and then leaf guard for 30 uh during your opponent's next turn any damage done to jump off by attacks is reduced by 30. um so if you're not killing something with mass attack sometimes you want to be trying to two shot but depending how your numbers line up leaf guarding is really good as well um because it does give you that minus 30 like that's a lot to not take it's pretty easy to kill a pokemon with 90 hp one of the 120 is a, like significantly more difficult to kill um so yeah it's kind of a nice lead up into mass like you leaf guard for 30 and then if you're mass attacking for let's say 80 30 plus 80 is 110 and then you're killing a, a majority of the format 
Um, so we also play three Baltoy. Uh, Baltoy has an attack called Psychic Balance. Um, Psychic Balance just lets you draw until you match your opponent's hand, which is really good for one. You know, if you're um, kind of having a mediocre setup, at least you, if you have an attach off, you can be drawing some cards. Uh, 50 HP, a single retreat, and a weakness to grass. I mean, you play those Baltoys to play Claydol, and it's kind of an interesting line. Like, you play a 3 3, which is a pretty thick line for Claydol. Um, and the reason you play that is because you play Broken Time Space in this deck, and you want bench Pokemon. So, so when you get when you're able to get those like double clade all in play or even like a triple clade all you're just seeing so much of your deck that like you're just milling through and you're able to see the resources that you need like the flash bite crobats and the expert belts and the energy um it just makes you really consistent and playing a three three means that you're like always seeing it which is really nice um so yeah cosmic power i'll just say cosmic power so cosmic power um you may choose up to two cards from your hand, put them to the bottom of your deck, and then you drop to six. So really, really good. Um, and, you know, with the amount of cards that you can just straight out play in this deck, like, you can just... A lot of them are instants. Instants being, like, you can just play it right away. Um, so being able to, like, thin your hand out, cosmic power, drop to six, uh, thin your hand out some more, play some more cards, bench Pokemon, attach energy, you know, do stuff, drop to six again. It just keeps your deck really consistent. It's the main consistency of the deck. Okay, so you play an unknown quick as well. Um, Unknown Q has a power called Quick. Uh, essentially, what Quick lets you do is it lets you attach it as a tool. Um, and then when it's attached as a tool, um, your Pokemon that Unknown Q is attached to have one less retreat. Uh, so really good for Hopip. There's a, other, a couple other one retreat Pokemon that you play, um, like Yuxi and Azelf and Spiritomb. So there, there are situations for sure where you need to get that free retreat. Um, starting with a Hopip, sometimes you just like, if you have a collector, you can just go collector for a quick and a Spiritomb retreat, and then you're doing something all of a sudden. So it just keeps your deck fluid. Uh, free retreat's kind of cool too. Speaking of free retreat, uh, you play a Crobat as well. So Crobat's got 80 HP, free retreat, uh, resistance to fighting, and then a weakness to lightning. Um, so it's got a power called uh, Flashbite. When you bench Crobat, you can drop 10 damage somewhere on your opponent's board. Uh, so again, it's just like really good for those damage manipulations. Like if your opponent is like, well, if he's mass attacking for 80 and I have mm, 110 HP, um, you know, I'm going to keep my bench here so that he has to hit either a triple Crobat drop or an extra belt and a Crobat. Um, but with the amount of cards that this deck draws, a lot of the times you're able to hit those resources. Uh, so that's a, definitely a really important part of the deck for hitting numbers. So this will play, um, okay, so I'm going to talk about the attack too. So uh, you do play multi-energy in this deck. So there are situations where um, you like need to attach to a Crobat. They're kind of niche, um, but being able to put a special condition on your opponent's active is definitely really strong. Um, and, you know, having that poison can be really good in niche situations. So it's good to know that you do have the multi-energy for that attack. Um, okay, so as elf, you play a time walk as elf, uh, 70 HP, a single retreat, a weakness to psychic. So uh, time walk, switch your prizes for a Pokemon, reveal it, put it in your hand, and then take a card from your hand and put it in your prizes. Um, so really good, just lets you be consistent. You only play a 424 of your main attackers. So if you prize um, any of that, it can be really bad. Um, and you can also use lockup too, because you play multi energy, sometimes lockup can be good. Uh, so 20 and then your opponent can't retreat. It's just, a, it's good to know all the attacks that you have available to you in a, in a deck, um, just because you never know the situation where it's like oh well my opponent is probably going to retreat and then i won't be able to do anything if you if that's your only out to be like i need to stop you from retreating it's good to know that you have that out um so you play an uxie as well uxie's got 70 hp single retreat uh weakness to psychic setup is the poke power so uh it's a great power and when you bench uxie draw until you have seven cards in your hand so really staple consistency awesome awesome card um psychic restores the attack so just 20 and then you can put uxie and all cards attached to the bottom of your deck um, in any order so you know good to be able to get that out of there for sure sometimes uh like a lot of decks can snipe it gengar snipes it um garchomp snipes it it kills it when it snipes it um but get, get, getting the gengar damage on there is really bad too so being able to take it off of your board can be really good uh, sometimes hitting for psychic weakness can be okay as well um we also play a spear tomb so spear tomb has got 60 hp a single retreat a resistance to normal and no weakness uh so spear tomb is great uh for two parts of the card the first one is its poke body so the poke body is called keystone seal uh keystone seal says all both players in play can't use trainer cards so you can still play supporters and stadiums uh but you can't play regular trainers which is great because you slow your opponent down and honestly like 
if you have the ability to turn one, you want to be mass attacking for lots of damage with this deck. You have that ability because you play broken time space. Um, but if you miss that, it's really nice to have an option to just go, ah, I missed. I didn't pop off as hard as I thought I was going to. I'm going to put this spear tomb in the active just to stop you from like having at least a decent turn. Uh, Darkness Grace is really good as well. So Darkness Grace is the attack on Spear Tomb. So for free, uh, search your deck for a Pokemon that evolves from one of your bench Pokemon and put it on that Pokemon and then put a damage counter on Spear Tomb. So uh, just really good for consistency. You know, if you have that quick and a collector, you can just get the Spear Tomb, get the quick, get whatever you need out of your active, find a hop it with the collector too. And then all of a sudden you're, you're building your board. Um, so yeah, just good consistency card. And you only play one because there's only a couple of situations where it's good but it is good to have it just in case you don't pop off i mean, also play a 1-1 luxray um so i mean you can attack with the uh luxray and this is one of the like reasons you play multi-energies because gyarados is a really good deck in the format um so being able to hit that gyarados for lightning weakness is definitely really strong uh but yeah so the luxray um that's on the the like basic the luxray gl that's not the level x you don't really use either of its attacks. I mean, you can Trash Bolt, but dedicating three energy to a Luxray is like a lot, especially when the deck only plays seven. Um, the main attack you're gonna be using is uh, Flash Impact on the level X. So for Lightning and a Colors, you do 60, um, and then it does one or 30 damage to one of your uh, benched Pokemon, or one of your Pokemon, you can put it on Luxray too if you want. Uh, so, you know, just really nice Flash Impact and um, like, Flash Impact does 60, and then plus 30 on the Gyarados. Uh, if you're able to hit some damage modifiers, like, you know, an Expert Belt or a couple Crobats, uh, you're able to kill it, or you can, like, Leaf Guard into it. Um, but having that Lightning Attack is definitely really solid. Bright Look is another reason you play the card, so Bright Look is its power. Once during your turn before you attack, uh, when you put Luxray GL level X from your hand under your active Luxray GL, uh, you can switch the defending Pokemon with one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. So being able to, you know... If your opponent has a clay doll, being able to bring that up and then just kill it with mass attack. Like 80 is a really easy number to hit with the deck. If you have a full bench and your po opponent has two Pokemon in play, you hit 80. So uh, being able to kill a clay doll like that is really good. And you play Poke turns as well. So being able to take those cheap, consistent prizes is, is a really good part about Luxray. Okay, so uh, we're going to get to the trainers now. So you play four Pokecoms. Uh, I think the Pokemon count is like 23. Forgive me if I'm like slightly mistaken. Um, I'm pretty sure it's 23 though. So you play so many Pokemon um, and like Pokecom just ups your consistency because as soon as you're able to like find your combo pieces in a specific order, your deck pops off. Okay, so let's say you have uh, a kind of a funky hand. You have like a Luxray level X and a Baltoy and a Hopip and a Jumpluff and like a Baby search and like a Pokecom and like an energy for seven. Um, what you can do is if you're able to find a broken time space, Pokemon communication just lets you go like, uh, I don't really have anything in this hand, but if you have a broken time space, uh, you can just go Beltoy, Pokecom for a Claydol, Claydol, put some cards away, start drawing cards. Um, so being able to like ditch the Pokemon that you don't need back into the deck is really nice too. Like sometimes you don't need Crobat yet. Uh, so putting it back is great. Same with the Luxray. Um, and just like having consistent Pokemon search, you attack based off your bench Pokemon. So finding Pokemon that you can bench is also really important. And that's kind of why I play four com. It's just finding your Pokemon is super important in this deck. I play four rare candy as well. Uh, rare candy is awesome. Uh, lets you just break the evolution rule, and uh, you know, with broken time space, your consistency for jump bluff is really good because you can either hit a turn one broken time space and then go hop up, skip loom, uh, jump bluff, or rare candy lets you break that evolution as well, a evolution rule as well. So you can just go hop up, rare candy, jump bluff, um, and then if you're able to find a bunch of Pokemon, you can just mass attack for a lot of damage. Uh, so it's a really, really aggressive card, and usually you only play like one more rare candy than what you need but this one plays two more just so that you're consistent um in your early game attackers this this deck uh feeds off how consistent it is and how fast attacking it is so if you're not attacking really fast and putting a lot of pressure on your opponent it's kind of mitigating the one of the best strengths of the deck uh, and four rare candy just lets you be really aggressive you play four poke turn as well uh four poke turn lets you pick up stuff like luxray um lets you pick up your crobat as well a lot of the time it's for crobat drops um because you're you're like say you're 20 shirt uh, a crobat drop and a poke turn lets you hit that 20 um so it's really nice to adjust your numbers like that get it picking up a luxury level x is really nice as well like if you need a bright look for a game uh your opponent has like a massive tanky level x pokemon with an extra belt and you just don't want to deal with it because you can't one shot it um being able to bright look can just win you a game so being able to use that again is really strong as well 
Okay, so we're gonna get into the one ofs now. Uh, so you play one of warp point. Uh, warp point says uh, you your opponent switches their active um, with one of their bench Pokemon, and then you switch. So they do it first. Uh, really nice because you have a free retreater in Luxray. So being able to just warp point if you have a Luxray out or something with an unknown Q on it, you can just put that up and then retreat back to whatever you want. Uh, but again, like sometimes, sometimes you just like can't knock out your opponent's active like if your opponent has like a fresh guardy level x with an expert belt and has 150 and you're not going to one shot that unless your opponent is like really really dumb and benches a bunch of pokemon um so being able to just go warp point bring something up on the bench that doesn't have as much uh hp to knock out is definitely really nice and jump off has free retreat too so warp point and like being forced to switch is usually that not that big of a deal because you have so many like ways to free retreat around the deck. Uh, so you actually play two warp point. I thought you played one, but it's just a different art. Um, so yeah, you play two and uh, deck is definitely really solid with two warp point. Like it just lets you move around what your opponent wants to force you attack to attack and just be like, nah, I'm just going to kill that thing on the bench instead. Okay, so you play an expert belt as well. Um, so expert belt buffs your damage by 20 and your HP by 20, essentially making you an EX Pokemon. Uh, so really strong, definitely really important for mass attack. Uh, it buffs your damage by 20. So hitting that damage modifier can be the difference between getting a knockout and whiffing a knockout. Um, having that extra HP is really nice as well. If you can um, like leaf, leaf guard, leaf guard gives you like essentially another 30 HP. So leaf guard and an expert belt can make you difficult to knock out. Um, and just like, Playing that so that you have the opportunity to ha make one of your Pokemon an EX Pokemon. Like, like you only play the jump luff line. That's your only really attackers. You can't attack with Luxray and you can't attack with Crobat. Like you can attack with other stuff, but you want to be attacking with the jump luff. Um, so you play Pokemon Recovery as well to to bring back the jump luff. But you you want your prize counts to be pretty much all jump luff that your opponent's knocking out because that that way you're doing the max amount of damage that you can do to your opponent. Um, so. You have the four prizes here, five with the expert belt, and then you knight maintenance back uh, like a one 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 line, and then all of a sudden um, that's your six prizes that you're forcing your opponent to knock out and force them to kill your main attacker is kind of really important just because it does have the the attacks that you want to be using. So knight maintenance, and uh, that's the card I was just talking about. Uh, shuffle three in any combination of basic energy cards and uh, Pokemon from your discard pile into your deck. Uh, really good late game recovery. You know you could bring back that Luxray if your opponent knocks it out, or if you're short on clay dolls, like say you prize one um, and or prize two, and then like one gets knocked out, and it, it's just good because there's a lot of like moving pieces in the deck that can be really good to recover. Recovering an Uxie can be really good as well, um, just so you can find it and draw in the late game. You play luxury ball as well. Luxury Ball says, uh, search your deck for a Pokemon that's not level X and put it in your hand. So it searches for everything but the Luxray. Uh, really, really good consistency. Again, Pokemon search is really important because you attack based off your bench Pokemon. Uh, so being able to find any Pokemon at any point in the game is really, really good. Okay, so in the stadiums, we play three Broken Time Space. Uh, broken Time Space lets you evolve as many times as you want during your turn. So that's great because of the 3-3 three, three Claydol line. Um, like as soon as you find a Claydol, you can put cards into your deck and find more stuff. And if you're able to find like another one, one clay doll line, you can just chain them. Cause you can go like clay doll, put some cards back. Oh, I found a clay doll. Cool. I'll just evolve the clay doll and then use the power. Um, and as you use clay doll and as you play cards out, broken time just lets you like delete your deck. You delete like half of your deck. And then all of a sudden your board is swarming with Pokemon. Uh, and that just makes mass attack really good. Being able to play them down uh, to not only draw with clay doll, um, but to also just, be attacking really aggressive and early uh, is a great part about Broken Time Space. Really strong card. Okay, getting into the supporters now. So you play three Bebe Search. Um, Bebe says, take a card from your hand, put it on the top of your deck, um, and then search your deck for a Pokemon card and put it in your hand. Uh, so great for Pokemon Search. Uh, it, it's the only thing other than Calm that finds your level X. So finding that Luxray with a supporter can be really important. Um, but yeah, just Pokemon consistency, really. Just finding your Pokemon is a really important part of the deck, and you play so many supporters that find Pokemon because your Pokemon search is important. Speaking of supporters that find Pokemon, uh, Roseanne's Research. So search your deck for two in combination of basic Pokemon and basic energy cards. Uh, really good. Let's you find that grass whenever you need it, um, but also lets you go like Roseanne's for 
uh, a bell toy and like something else that you need, like a bell toy and an Uxie or something. Um, and, and lets you complete those pieces that you need to potentially pop off. Uh, finding the basic Pokemon can be really important. And again, mass attack, you need to find basic Pokemon. So Rosens is, a, is another great part of that. You play two Pokemon collector as well. So that's so much Pokemon search. You're dedicating uh, eight supporter slots, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 cards. Um, I count the spirit tomb because you search for Pokemon with a spirit tomb. Uh, 14 cards dedicated to just finding Pokemon. Uh, so that's a really, really good consistency of the deck. Almost a, a quarter of your deck is dedicated to finding Pokemon. And in a deck like this, that is a really important part. So I do like that. Um, yeah, so f search your deck for three basic Pokemon, put it in your hand. So that's great. You can find like a Uxie, a Baltoy, uh, and a Spiritomb, like I was saying before. Uh, and then if you have that free retreat, you can just go into the Spiritomb. Or you can find a Quick to give yourself free retreat and then get to the Spiritomb. Uh, but yeah, Collector, all of a sudden, it, it buffs your mass attack by 30 as well. So just being able to hit those bench Pokemon is really nice. You play Judge as well. Uh, so Judge is the only hand disruption in the format other than um, Looker's Investigation. Uh, but it's the only like decent one to hurt your opponent's hand size so both players shuffle their hands in and then you draw four um which is you know you don't really care that much because you play a three three clay doll so if you have to shuffle your hand and draw four worst case you're putting two cards to the bottom and drawing four so i mean that's not that big of a deal it can hurt your opponent a lot more um but having that option to disturb your opponent's hand is definitely really good and uh just lets them not stockpile resources into their hand they play a palmer's contribution as well uh so palmer's Contribution says search your discard pile <clears throat> for up to five in any combination of Pokemon and basic energy cards shown to your opponent and shuffle them into your deck. So this is your other Pokemon recovery. Uh, so you play a night maintenance for Pokemon recovery, but a Palmer's is also really good for Pokemon recovery. Like I said, you only really want to be attacking with that uh, jump bluff and you only play four. So being able to get them back means that you can play a full game. Okay, we're going to get to the energy. Let's so play two multi-energy. Multi-energy says uh, if it's attached to a Pokemon with no special energy, it's a rainbow, so it's any energy. But if the Pokemon multi-energy is attached to already has a special energy attached to it, um, it's colorless. So essentially, you just don't attach both multis to the same Pokemon and you're chilling. But uh, it lets you fill out that one attack for um, mass. Mass attack lets you fill out that one grass, um, but also lets you hit that flash impact if you need to hit for lightning weakness or toxic fang in a niche situation if you really need to poison your opponent's active or something. Um, but yeah, you play the two mainly just for flash impact. Like Gyarados is so good and, it, and not having an answer to Gyarados can spell doom for sure. And then you play four grass. Um, so because of night maintenance and Palmer's con contribution, uh, you don't really need that much energy and you, and you attack for one. So uh, you, you're a single attach and then you're going and you play Roseanne's too, which searches grass. It seems really low, but it's actually not because your attack cost is so low. Um, so yeah, four grass and with Roseanne's that's consistent as well. Okay, well, uh, this has been Jump Luff. If, uh, if you have any questions about the deck, uh, leave them in the comments below and uh, I'll do my best to get back to them. Uh, but yeah, thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time.